I'm Manuel Hernandez and welcome to Norwich City Centre. Hello everybody, Lewis, Norwich City Centre. I hope you're all doing very well. I hope you've had a good week. International breaks are hideous. I hate international breaks. Of course, I get excited for the Euros and the World Cup, but I'm not a massive fan of them. Um, much prefer watching Norwich City play and much prefer watching Norwich City win, which has kind of been the, the theme over the last few months. It's been absolutely magical, but I thought in this video, um, I'll do an international roundup and kind of a roundup of what's been happening um, over the last seven days for Norwich City players outside. Lovely surroundings, Adam, and let's talk about some Norwich City. Um, I can't wait for Norwich to return. Of course, we come back on Good Friday against Preston, which will be a very interesting game. Be interesting as well because it's going to be a quick turnaround for a lot of the players, and we might be without um, a lot of a lot of key Norwich City players. So that'll be an interesting dynamic. But um, yeah, let's go for a weekly roundup. I think we have to start with Team Mipuki, the guy who's been leading the line for us. 22 championship goals for Team Mipuki. The last 10 games, he's been you know scoring a goal per game, if not better. It's been absolutely outstanding, and he continues to do absolutely sensational, sensationally well for Finland. He is a goat. He is he is just absolutely brilliant. It's his birthday today as well, so happy birthday to Timu. Um, and yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Just continues his brilliant form. Two goals. Um, in, in a 2-2 draw and then recently in, in the last game scores a 90th minute penalty so that's two two games for Finland uh, three goals for Team Lubricki and he is almost a one-man team at, at, at parts you, you hate that phrase you hate that term but he really is scoring all the goals for Finland and scoring a lot of goals for Norwich as well he's absolutely fantastic and uh, if you look at Team Lubricki's record for Finland um, when he was playing for Norwich and when he wasn't, he's played 62 games for the for the Finland national side. Um, when he's not been playing for Norwich and scored 10 goals. So 10 goals and 62 appearances. And then when he has been playing for Norwich, 27 appearances, 20 goals. I think that just speaks volumes of just how important Norwich City have been to Team Ipuki. And obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a two-way direction how important um, um, Team Ipuki has been to Norwich. But how important Norwich have been to Team Ipuki. And uh, he continues a remarkable run. Uh, for the Finland team as well and I heard some interesting quotes coming from the Finland manager who said that Team Ipuki um, needs to play for a bigger club, needs to leave Norwich and uh, that reminded me of a few years back with the Switzerland coach and, and the situation around Tim Closer in Switzerland. Um, yeah, that's ridiculous from the, fin from the Finland manager. I mean, Team Ipuki could play for a, for a bigger club, definitely. He could play for an established Premier League team like a Southampton or a Crystal Palace but a, there's no guarantee he'll he'll start, and B, even if he does start, it doesn't always work like that. Crystal Palace, Southampton, lots of teams play a different style of football. Norwich City are on the front foot and like to attack, and just if you know Team Ipuki moves to a bigger club, he might not play, and also the style of football might not suit him. And why leave Norwich when he's guaranteed game time and in sensational form? So those quotes really do uh, irritate me. But that's Team Ipuki because continues his sensational run and uh, it's, it's things you love to see it's things you love to see and uh, the Pookie party keeps on going um, and the most important thing from a weekly round up when when players go on to the international breaks is you just want to make sure they're not fit the last thing you want to see is a player go out and play for the country and play you know 90 minutes 90 minutes and then get injured and, and be out for the season that's the last thing you want unfortunately enough so far fingers crossed there's going to be all the Norwich City players are going to be fit and they're going to be fighting for the run in towards the end of the season. And that's what you want for Norwich City because in November and December, half our team were injured, a lot of them from international breaks as well. Um, so it's really good to see. Fingers crossed, touch wood, touch wood that um, no players have been injured. In terms of other players, Grant Hanley scores for the Scotland national team. Grant Hanley's been in and out on the, Scot uh, the Scottish national team, comes in, makes a start. Um, I know a lot of Scotland fans were quite critical of Grant Hanley and not massive fans, but look, Grant Hanley has been one of Norwich's players of the season. He's a completely different player from what he was a few years ago in his career and he scores in a 1-1 draw against Austria. Um, it's a really, really good goal as well. A, a, a free kick comes in from a set piece and Grant Hanley runs onto the end of it and a bullet header past the goalkeeper. And I'm sure if, if, if Grant Hanley was wearing a Norwich City shirt, that might have gone towards the corner flag. Um, Grant Hanley's heading is not particularly the most accurate when it comes to scoring set pieces for Norwich. But really nice to see Grant Hanley score. And look, Norwich City are doing really well and that's 
you know, naturally going to translate to probably better performances for, for, for the national teams as well. Um, another player we have to talk about in this in this weekly roundup as well is Ono Hernandez. What his historic moment for him? He makes his um, debut for the national team, and really, really interesting with Cuba and their whole situation around football. I mean, Ono Hernandez isn't famous in Cuba. Cuba is a, a very different country, a very unique country, and their main sport is baseball. And Ono Hernandez is not famous in Cuba, um, but finally makes his national debut. There's a real kind of complete change of philosophy around the Cuban national team, and uh, Ono Hernandez makes his debut, comes on as a substitute and then his second game scores as well. And Ono Hernandez is, he's talking about a one-man team for Team of Bookie in Finland. It's probably even more apparent for Cuba and Ono Hernandez. I mean, there's very few, I mean, there's some Cuban national players who aren't even professional footballers, which just shows the situation of football in Cuba. But Ono Hernandez, you know, makes his, makes his first team debut and scores a brilliant goal as well. A nice direct run into the top corner as well. And it's really pleasing to see Ono Hernandez score for Cuba. Um, and just really good to see him playing in a Cuban shirt and, and nice to see Cuban football. I mean, in regards to Nono Hernandez this season for Norwich, he's not really kicked on. He's had another one of those players who's had a long-term injury. He's only starting to come back in the last month or so, last couple of months. But yeah, great for Nono Hernandez. In terms of other players who have been kind of on the stage, I mean, we've had Dimitri Giannoulis play for Greece. You've had Daniel Sonani, remember him? Um, of course, a, a lowly for Norwich. Um, he, I think he's playing in Belgium. Um, played against Republic of Ireland and Luxembourg. Beat Republic of Ireland 1-0. It's a shock result probably of the day, a, a shock result of the week. Uh, Republic of Ireland losing and Daniel Sonani's Luxembourg, you know, beat them. And Sonani was one of the best players on the pitch, which shows just how good Norwich City's kind of recruitment has been. And whether we whether we see Daniel Sonani in a yellow and green shirt, I would like to see him play in a yellow and green shirt, but regardless of whether we see him or not, that's a really special moment for him. And then some other players as well. Tim Krull, really interesting week for him. Um, playing for the Netherlands team, he starts on the bench, or he's named on the bench, and then the first team goalkeeper for Netherlands gets an injury, and now suddenly Tim Krull's in the spotlight. The first game didn't go too well for him and the Netherlands. They lost 4-2 in, in quite a big um, World Cup qualifier, so that was not good for Tim Krull. Maybe he could have done better on one of the goals. But in the second game, the Netherlands get back to winning ways, and Tim Krull makes some brilliant saves. So mixed for Tim Krull. Um, but it's really great to see him actually come and play. And, and, and since he's joined Norwich, it's great to see him in the Netherlands team um, and, and really kind of make that more of his spot for him. And then lastly, a few other players, Max Aarons, Oliver Skip and Todd Campbell for the under 21. Skip played both games. Max Aarons played one, Todd Campbell didn't play, but they lost England under 21s, uh, lost to Portugal 2-0, I think it was, and then also lost um, in, in another shock result as well. And uh, A.D. Boyfroyd is not the man to take uh, the England under-21s forward. He, he's a you know, really poor manager and he got sacked, I think, at Northampton. So that says a lot about kind of the England under-21 team. But yeah, really disappointing um, result for those guys. And when you watch the England under-21s play, it's just hoof ball, it's long ball. And it's it kind of makes you appreciate what we have with Daniel Farker and how we try and play, in my opinion, the right style of football. Um, and then you've got A.D. Boyfreud and, and the, the England under-21 team, kind of a golden generation just hoofing it forward, isn't it? It says a lot about the kind of development there. But some might argue the England under-21s are um, becoming used to first-team football with all these losses and um, failure. So maybe maybe he is the right man to take England forward just because he's getting them used to failure. Who knows? But um, that's the weekly roundup. The most important thing is the Norwich City players, none of them are injured, fingers crossed, touch wood and all that. Um, but no, Norwich City return to action on Friday and um, yeah, hopefully in a couple of weeks we can celebrate a promotion party, we can celebrate more Pookie parties and um, come August 27,000 fans will be back at Carrow Road in the Premier League. That's the goal, that's the hope and um, Norwich City have got a really, really good chance uh, of getting back to the Premier League as champions but yeah, Norwich City pretty much look nailed on now to get promoted to the Premier League which is just fantastic in it full credit to Farker and Stuart Webber but that's the weekly roundup hope you enjoyed this video um, and yeah I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section on the international break and all things Norwich City thanks for watching subscribe to Norwich City Central if you're new and I'll see you later